Alright, I'm going to make this video about Stefan Molyneux. I've never made a Stefan Molyneux video. Uh, people have kind of asked me what I've thought about him, although I haven't had any explicit requests for videos about him. And I thought, since I've just now got to see him give a number of lectures and kind of see him uh, not giving lectures, uh, it would be a good time to make a video about him. I didn't actually speak to him personally, other than in very brief passing. Um, and here's my take on him. I... I think he's a smart guy. I respect the fact that he's trying to make a living uh, doing what he's doing. Um, that's cool. He, of course, he has every right to do do that, and I admire like the passion. Um, and I do consider him a philosopher. I think that it's wrong to just say I don't agree with him, and so he's not a philosopher. I think that's silly. Uh, but and, and and the other thing is he has made a number of very excellent videos over the years. Um, I think You Are a Slave is one, or the, the one where he equates the globe to a farm. Those are really fantastic, stellar presentations. And uh, he deserves all the, all the views he gets on those and all the credit, whatever. But intellectually, he's what he presents, and I don't, I don't think this is what he's capable of, but what he presents is like two steps below uh, people like Dan D'Amico or Ben Powell or even Tom Woods or um, Bob Murphy. Basically, every time he was asked a question, he would go back to the gun in the room. And this was explicit. They had a, a panel on Austrian ethics, and Ben Powell asked Stefan Molyneux. Ben Powell wasn't on the panel, but he asked Stefan Molyneux, what about consequentialism? Um, shouldn't you make arguments about whether, you know, how things turn out, how things work, utilitarian arguments? And Molyneux said no, and Molyneux just said, you always point out the gun in the room, gun in the room, gun in the room, gun in the room. And there's nothing wrong with pointing out the gun in the room, and it is kind of a good argument to use, but I think it's pretty obvious that it's insufficient on its own, and logically we can see why. Like, like hypothetically, Molyneux's argument is, it's wrong to use violence, so if someone's using violence, you just point that out, and then they have to admit that it's wrong, and then they'll stop. Um, even for now, ignoring the fact that you may have evil people who might say, yeah, it's violence, and yeah, I'm going to do it anyway, which when we're talking about government is something that we have to acknowledge as a possibility. Let's just assume people say, yeah, that it is evil. Uh, there is a consequentialist argument that would mean make it irrelevant. Um, for instance, if I say... That if you say, well, yes, government is force and government is violence, that's true, and that is evil, but if we didn't have it, all of us would be dead and, you know, the world would degenerate into a kind of chaos that's even worse and more terrible, then we should, hence we should uh, tolerate it. And this is exactly the argument you always are going to hear, in which case, just stating that government is evil is completely insufficient. You have to come up with an argument, a consequentialist argument, to show that actually, uh, if we got rid of the gun in the room, there wouldn't be that much chaos, or at least relative to the statism we have, there'd be less chaos. And that's where, like, Austrian economics is so fucking important. That's why I say e economics is so important, because with that, we can say, with a high degree of uh, convincing certainty, that removing coercion from society would be beneficial. On consequentialist grounds. And so Molyneux's point about the gun in the room is valid. And here's the other problem is, of course, maybe he phrases it that way all the time, but the idea that the government is force and that it's violent and that it's some degree of evil is hardly a unique insight from Stefan Molyneux. I mean, George Washington said government is force. It's not reason. It's not empathy, whatever. And he was not the first person to say so. We could probably go all the way back to the classics, to Plato and Aristotle for that, if not before. Um, and here's what here's my impression of Molyneux. I think he makes he's smart enough to I think to understand everything that I just said and everything Ben Powell might have asked. But I think he makes inferior arguments just because it's easier for him to then claim that they're original to him, and he feels incentivized to say that because he's making his living off of convincing a whole bunch of people that he's basically 
worth a worthwhile person on the internet that that he makes his living convincing people to buy his stuff or subscribe to his channel or whatever so he can sell ads or whatever else and he probably fears and i understand this that if he goes around saying well actually mises came up with this and rothbard came up with this and this I, like there's not a ton that's really original. There's almost nothing that's really original to Stefan Molyneux, which is not a slight because that's true with pretty much everybody. Even the most monumental figures like Rothbard, they're, I mean, they're standing on Mises' shoulders for 95% of their height, just like Mises is standing, standing on Menger and like all the classical. And so that's not, that's not a personal slight. But if you, if you have, well, A, if you have an ego, which, Stefan does. Well, we all have egos, but you know what I mean in a pejorative kind of sense. In the sense that you want to take more credit than you're due, then you don't want to admit that, which that's part of Stefan's problem. The other problem is, if you're if your living is based on convincing people that you were so, you know, worth, you're worth actually getting paid just to be listened to, then you may be reluctant, and there's a bug in here, you may be reluctant to admit that, well, really, you don't have to pay me. You could just go and get this information elsewhere, although even then you'd be paying for it usually. So I really get that impression. He has followers. And to take a play off the Paul bots, I think we, that they should be called Steph bots. And then because that's the name of his YouTube channel. And they're not all bad people, and I would not want to characterize them all one way because the ones that they all were there wearing free domain shirts and. Um, I got in, a, in debates with a few of them, not all of them, and they were not very good debates. Uh, they were pretty, I know everything because I listen to uh, Stefan Molyneux. Listen, of all the well-informed libertarians there, which I'd say is still more than, I, more than half the people there, they all know who Stefan Molyneux is, and they've all seen his YouTube channels, and most of them have kind of been on his Free Domain Wit Radio, and let's do his podcasts. And they're familiar with his work, and they found it not as convincing as you, or they found other things they find more convincing. And to just presume that uh, we're all a bunch of idiots because we haven't uh, accepted your messiahs, and that's maybe going too far, your, your intellectual heroes assessment of everything does not mean we're stupid and ignorant. Uh, just like the fact that you believe in Stefan Molyneux doesn't mean that you're stupid and ignorant. It just means that some of your ideas aren't as convincing as you think that they are. And I had that happen a couple times. There are other free domain people there who seem pretty, pretty high functioning. And uh, I can't really say anything bad about them. And that's fine. They want to buy freedom. I mean, it's good. I, I'm glad that Stefan Molyneux is, is, generates money and he has every right to do that. I but I, I think it does put a, 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 an incentive on him to to amp up. And Alex Jones is the same way. I don't, I don't begrudge him making money, but I think one of the things he markets is fear. And so he amps up. He does a lot of fear mongering because uh, it, gen it has the potential to generate interest and hence returns, which is fine. But then his message gets warped a little bit. And I think Stefan does the same thing. There's a lot of stuff that he could uh, make better arguments with if he just... But that would would entail accrediting, basically, other people. Because there's no way you can make certain arguments and not have it be known that, okay, someone else made these arguments before me. Which is, again, not... That's nothing to be ashamed of. And maybe and this kind of goes back to like wa people say wage labor is a slavery. Since I have a day job, I don't care if people. Well, I like people to watch my videos, but I I don't depend on it financially. I don't make any money. I don't have ads on my videos, and my paycheck's not going to change whether I have uh, ten thousand views or no no views. And so there's no pressure on me to pretend that. You know, an argument's coming from me when it's really obviously coming from Rothbard. And I'll usually, if I'm reviewing a book or something, I'll be explicit. Like, this is what I learned from the book. Uh, he's under pressure, I think, or at least he believes he's under pressure to be like he's this wellspring of all this stuff. And he, he has some insights, I think, that are original to him, but they're not right, most of them. Or they're pretty mild. Uh, he's definitely a post-objectivist, which means he's standing on Ayn Rand, which again is not <laughs> is not a diss 
Some of the best anarcho-capitalists I know are post-objectivists. Many of the smartest. There are really smart people who are objectivists, who were objectivists, who still are objectivists. And there is nothing wrong with any of that. Uh, but it, it does bug me. And look, he was a one-trick pony the whole time. And I found Dan D'Amico is not the most famous Austrian. I'd seen him a couple times when Motorhome Diaries interviewed him uh, when he was on Freedom Watch. Also... He's all in. Oh, the other. It's uh, another aside here. Pa the paleo thing is real popular among the libertarians, I guess, because D'Amico's on it. And like the last the first videos I ever saw him, he was a really pudgy guy. He's not pudgy now. He's very well muscled. You can tell he works out a lot, and he's covered in tattoos, and he's kind of a badass looking fellow. But actually, he is. He was just one of the one of the few things that I ever heard that was really kind of thought provoking with some of the stuff he said. Uh, ben Powell the same way. I think Ben Powell's a bit of a, you know, he's got a big ego too, but I think he, he's kind of earned it. And uh, he's definitely a hardcore libertarian. He referred to Rothbard as, quote, his hero. Uh, he's the kind of guy who gets apoplectically angry at statism. And uh, I'd like to see a lot more from him, actually. Um, but the stuff that they said and Bob Murphy, they would actually, when they were asked questions, try and answer the question. Whereas Molyneux would want to go into a monologue speech um, about about the gun in the room, basically. Because I think it's something that he thinks he can market as Molyneux. And he's selling himself short because he is an intelligent guy. Uh, he can upstage these people because whereas they have degrees in economics, he has a degree in drama. Uh, or something like that. I think he has even may even have a master's degree in it. He, he has a stage presence. He's an actor, uh, which is there's nothing wrong with that. And he's able to kind of upstage a lot of people when really intellectually he's three, three orders down from them in what he's presenting, not in how smart he actually is, because I think he is, you know, probably just as smart as they are more or less. Uh, but what he's hawking to people is it's, it's, it's very plain fair, uh, at least to me. A lot of noobs, a lot of people who aren't familiar with it, it's pretty intense, but I think it's insufficient. So, I like to see the man branch out and and maybe fix some of the problems that he has, and I think he'd be better for it. So, But he's not for me. Oh, and then the thing I didn't mention is I, everyone knows that he basically um, blocks people who disagree with him, and I, I've met... Some of the people who he blocked, I I know I known about. I actually met YouTube user Podreg, who's a Scottish libertarian who used to have a lot of videos, and he deleted most of them, unfortunately. Um, one of the last videos he made was about Stefan Molyneux, or maybe he did it on Facebook. Anyway, he's a smart, earnest guy, and just asking questions can get you banned from there. And I've heard that multiple source, multiple times from um, people I respect quite a bit who would not be trolling ever. And that's a bad sign. I think that that goes back to he doesn't want his subscribers, the people who are paying him, to think that he might be wrong. And so when people present stuff that he might be wrong on, uh, he does, he gets rid of it. And and he he could be he is wrong. We're all wrong about stuff, and we have to be able to admit that. And I think he's afraid that if he admits that he's wrong, that his his base will be like, oh well, he's wrong. So why am I paying for a subscription on Freedom Man Radio? I don't know if that's really accurate as to what would happen, but I, I have a feeling that that's what Stefan thinks, and so he basically can't admit that he's ever wrong, or is very unwilling to. So, uh, that's my take on him. Oh, under 15 minutes. Not bad.